Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Milwaukee Beer Review. As always, I'm Josh. And I'm Ross. <laughs> Don't be so disappointed. So today, we have another episode in the stout category. It is big beer season, and we've had some stuff laying around in uh, the cellar for a while mm -hmm. that we were like, hey, you know what? We got all this great stuff we collected on Black Friday. None of this is that. But... Let's do a video and and review some Wisconsin-based breweries yeah. that have put out some barrel-aged stouts over the past year plus, yeah. and see what we think about it a year later. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. So yeah. starting off, uh, we got Milwaukee Brewing Company's Recombobulation uh, Russian Imperial Stout Bourbon Barrel Aged Beer. Yes. Um, quite handy. It's the 2020 release. This so is they, the 2020 release. Yeah. They did re-release this in 2021. Yep. So per the 2021 metrics. It was 12%. 12%. Yeah. I'm assuming this is about the same. Yeah, we couldn't find anything for the 2020 variant, um, but the recombobulation is a great name, kind of plays off the idea at the airports, if you guys have been to Mitchell, the recombobulation area, which I think yeah. is a great name. It's a great word. Yeah, it really is. Recombobulation. Who yeah. doesn't love that? So It's great. Um, so, I did not like this beer last year yeah. when I tried it. We, wasn't, we, we were underwhelmed, I think is the... Nicest way we can put it. I don't think I've had this, though, in a year. I haven't. I know I haven't. And this is the same variant, the mm -hmm. same year, the 2020. So I'm curious, a year in the cellar back there, what it did. Yeah. So, Just get a little nose on it. Just get a little nose on it. I mean, it smells... There's a decent amount of bourbon on the nose, but it almost smells like... See, I'm not getting that. I'm just getting, like... Stout. I'm not getting a lot of bourbon. I'm just getting kind of a almost a basic stout, to be honest with you. I'm getting a little bourbon. I'm getting some smokiness on the nose. Um, I don't want to say off flavors, but because because there's no flavor because I'm smelling it, but off notes. It's a, it's a smell. It, it smells a little bit odd. I, I don't think it's bad by any stretch of the imagination. I think this is similar to what I got in the nose last year. When I yeah, I, th I think when you think of a bourbon barrel aged stout, you're expecting something different than what we're getting right now. Um, it's not that far off, though. I think it is, though. I'm not getting... Um, let's try it yeah. before we say yeah. anything about it. So, 2020, recombobulation from Milwaukee Brewing Company a year later. Cheers. Cheers. A little vanilla um, all the way through. Some bourbon characteristics. Um. All right, so let me say this. A year in the cellar. This is unique. I'm actually almost getting almost like a berry note. Do you get like a like a little bit of berry? I'm not berry. Like I almost get like some berry on this. Like dark fruit berry, like. Almost like, um, like blueberry-ish. It's weird. It, it's not bad. To be honest, it's not bad. It's not great, though, either. So, the more sips I take, I'm getting less vanilla than I did, like, the initial first couple of sips. I'm actually getting a little bit more of a smokiness and a slight metallic tinge to it. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just picking up something wrong. I'm just... This isn't that bad. I don't get any any metallic like notes to bit. it. I, my palate, I'm not getting that. I'm getting, yeah, I'm, yeah. for whatever reason, berry. Like, the, like last night, I actually had um, one of the berry from Third Space. What the heck was the beer Mystic that came Knot. out? Mystic Knot? Yeah, the Mystic Knot series. I had a Mystic Knot berry last night, and this reminds me a little bit of it. For whatever reason, like, on the palate, that's what I'm getting. To be, to be blunt and honest, it's, I remember being underwhelming when I had it last year. I, I went into a kind of a clean slate because like, I've had beers, I've aged a year, and it's different. It's still very underwhelming to me. I'm just, I'm not getting It's unfortunate because we both know Milwaukee Brewing Company has a great barrel program. Agreed. Like, Agreed. Cherry Bounce, uh, Louis Resurrection, yep. Louis Demise. The recent bar line we've Oh, had. God, yeah. yeah I so. mean, it's really good stuff. Why is this not good? Louis Demise isn't barrel aged. Is it not barrel aged? It's just their amber ale. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Resurrection is the barrel aged version of yes. it. Um, but to your point, 
we know they can do a better job than this. We love Milwaukee Brewing Company. We love you guys. This needs to be better. Now, I am very curious if 2021 variant is different. And maybe we'll have to try that. Maybe we'll yeah. give that another chance. Stick but... around for a future episode where we review that. Yeah. Um, if, if I'm putting this one on tap, though, based on everything I'm having right now, based on what I'm drinking, I hate just, I'm going to put it about two and a half. It's, just, it's, nothing, it's nothing special. It's just nothing there. I feel like that's low. I would still give it a three. I think a three is still a fair score. <laughs> I, I don't think this is bad. I should... I'm enjoying it more than I thought I was going to. I, I went into this with low expectations, I suppose, um, based on last year's review or our thoughts on it off camera. But I still think it's it's decent. It's not great. It's not it's not horrible. I, I, I'll, I'll admit there's some harshness to my score because of my opinion of Milwaukee Brewing Company and their barrel age program, and this just sounded so good it's, yeah. it's not hitting a mark remember how excited we were when they said yeah. oh we're releasing a bourbon barrel aged imperial yeah. stout we're like oh hell yeah, yeah. milwaukee brewing company yeah. definitely better stuff from you guys yeah. Yeah. um we'll try the 2021 and we'll see yeah. if that's different so. um all right so no, up next um this is a beer that neither of us have tried mm -hmm. as far as i'm aware uh, so this is from Company Brewing here in Milwaukee. This is their Thousandfold. So I bought this, God, it had to have been in like February or March of last year. I don't know when you guys released this in 2020, but uh, this is a bourbon barrel aged Imperial Stout. Um, this is your Thousandfold, or this is called Thousandfold. Uh, this is, an, it comes in at an ABV of 10%. So um, a little bit lower than the recombobulation, uh, but this has been sitting in the cellar and we were waiting for a time to do it. And here it is. So um, let's get a little nose on Company's Bourbon Barrel Aged Imperial Stout. It smells way more bourbon mm -hmm. forward even than yeah. Recombobulation did. Now we've done some Company on the show, and we haven't done a full-blown Company episode yet. No, but Alphabetical Order won yeah, our March Madness order. series. Yeah. yeah, so we've done a little bit of Company. We, we had good thoughts on them. This smells, it's got the traditional barrel-aged yeah. stout notes to it. There's yep. bourbon there, there's sweetness, there's a little bit of oaky oakiness to it. So I'm, I've, I've said this in a couple previous shows, and for whatever reason, sometimes when I get a bourbon barrel-aged beer, I get apple notes to it, and that's, yeah. this is what I'm actually getting in it. There's and a little I, bit of that. I, I don't know why I get that. I, I'm curious. I'm getting it too. Okay. But that's what I'm getting, is heavy, like green apple notes yeah and i wonder why that happens i think it's the bourbon i it? think okay. it's the bourbon it's got to be the bourbon i don't know what barrels these were aged in but it's definitely got that apple note okay. to it on All the right. nose but i think it's the bourbon but other than that it's a pretty standard barrel aged stout yeah nose yeah all right, All right man Keep cheers buddy. There isn't any, in my opinion, heavy characteristics coming out. It's pretty smooth <laughs> all the way through. You disagree? No, that's what I was going to say. Um, it just is. Yeah. It exists. There, there's a little bourbon, small, 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 small bite. Um, but there really isn't, like, any, like, vanilla character. Nothing I'm getting on the nose I'm getting in the palate. Um, the bourbon is there, and it's that apple note on the palate, too. It's the same... The same, the same note that we were getting on the nose that you said was was apple forward is the bourbon characteristics in this beer. I'm definitely getting that on the palate. It seems to be there front end to the back end of the beer. But to your point, there's nothing else standing out on the palate of yeah. this at all. Like with the recombobulation, you kind of got some differentiation in there. This feels just pretty flat. I don't disagree. Um, I, I think this... I don't think, if, if you gave me this and I was, it was a blind taste test, I don't think I'd pick up this as a bur bourbon barrel aged beer personally. There's just not a lot going on there for, for me. Like, it's not, there's not a lot, it's, it just, it tastes kind of like a a flat stout. And that, that sounds worse than it is. It make not it flat. Uh, flat is the wrong word. The, the notes are flat. Like, there's not a lot of attenuation here. There's yeah. not a lot of differentiation in characteristics on this beer, so... 
I think to that point, I, I agree with you. I think I would rather drink this though than the recombobulation. I, I would agree. I, I, I was I was kind of thinking like, we're well, gonna scar this, so I'm gonna actually let you lead this off because I'm really curious what you say. I'm gonna put it at three and a quarter. Okay. I don't think it's great. I think it's better than the recombobulation that I put it at three. But there's nothing special about this. It's uh, pretty straightforward bourbon barrel aged stout. I don't agree with you that I wouldn't pick this out as bourbon barrel aged because there's definitely bourbon and that's that apple character. But um, I just don't think it's it, it, it even climbs towards that four tier oh, category. No, I, I'm going to put this at three. Um, it's enjoyable. I would I wouldn't be disappointed if someone gave me one and I drank it. Um I've had other things from company. I was excited for this one. Kind of in the same recollection we say with, I know what company can do, and this just isn't really hitting that mark, is all. Yeah. So, I, I'm going to put it at three. Again, three is still a very good score. It is. I think we sometimes like, oh, three's 50. No, three's still above average. So, it's, it's a good beer. Um, yeah, if you look at scores on Untapped, yeah. a three looks like garbage because they're taking the top end yeah. averages of everything, but. We're trying to be realistic here, yeah. but where we place this with other beers in the same category, and I yeah. think that's fair. Yeah. So. so. All right. So last, we have from Octopi Brewing, um, we have the Barrel Age Belgian Chocolate Toffee Vanilla Stout, which is a mouthful. There's a, whole There's a bunch lot of, going, on whole bunch going on in here. There's a lot going on in here. So this comes in at 11.5%. Octopi is a brewery based out of Wanakee, Wisconsin. Um, a couple brewers are right at Wanakee. It's kind of more of a... Yeah, Untitled Arts. Untitled Arts uh, is there. actually shares a space with Octopi. I think f- f- um, that one I can't think of. We've yeah. done things. That, that one um, brewery Forger. is there. Forger? Humble Forger. Humble Forger. Are yes. they out of Wonky? They are out of Wonky. They are out of Wonky. Yes. Um, they might like, share a sa- the same space I, I, I with think all they these do. Breweries. I think they actually all kind of share the same space. It's kind of like a c- c- uh, collaboration. Collaboration, co op type say thing. The wrong word. You were, yeah, you were getting so, there. Yeah, whatever. Um, this is the first Octopi we've done on the show. Um, so I'm actually kind of excited. I've never had Octopi brewing. I, I can't think of anything I've had from Octopi. Um, there's a lot going on here. Again, it's a Belgian chocolate toffee vanilla. So we got a lot going on yeah. with the barrel aged bourbon. Yeah, I've so. had this for a while. I think same, uh, close to the same time period as the Thousand Fold sitting in the cellar. So I've been waiting for a time to do this beer. Let's get a little Ooh. nose on it. Ooh. Oh, that toffee <laughs> is <laughs> prominent. It's, it's, let me get it. Yeah, definitely toffee fudge. Yep. That fudgy chocolate notes there, a little bit of bourbon behind it, but definitely the ca- star characters are toffee and fudge, I think, on the yeah, nose of this. Yeah. This smells amazing compared to the last two. Yeah, this this is the first one where what the label says is what we're smelling. I mean, let's be fair, though. There is nothing as far as adjuncts in the recombobulation yep. or the thousandfold. It is a bourbon barrel-aged yep. imperial stout as described. This has toffee and chocolate. And vanilla. And vanilla. As described. With so, bourbon, yeah. I mean, you're going to get a nicer nose yeah. on that, yep. probably. Yeah, 100%. Let's we'll see if it's actually good. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Damn. That toffee's the main characteristic. Like, that is the star of the show. That's decadent. Um, This is, this is a dessert beer. Mm-hmm. I would never guess this is what we said eleven and a half. Eleven and a half. I would never guess this is eleven and a half. In this case, like a Oof. a nice like seven percent pastry stout. Oofta. In my opinion. Good word. Oofta. Yeah, yeah that's well a good done. word. Thank you. Dang. So like, right on the front, you get toffee. There's a fudge characteristic to the toffee too. It's not just straight up toffee. There's like fudgy chocolatey notes along with that and that sticks through all the way through the back end the bourbon to this the bourbon characteristics are blended into that Mm -hmm. just like the nose um the toffee and chocolate take over the whole palette of this beer front end to back end this is damn good so i'm one where when i see like multiple flavor profiles and things being thrown in i see vanilla and they're like i really want vanilla to be the star of the show and when it isn't i'm kind of like I'm disappointed. This is a rare occasion where I'm actually excited the fact that it's the chocolate and the toffee. Yeah. Um, and the vanilla's 
it's doing something, but you don't taste it. It's definitely yeah. balancing it out a little bit. Um, but that toffee is really prominent. Um, it's really good. Really good. Um, recently, Jenny and I did an episode mm. where we reviewed Untitled Arts Midnight Toffee Stout. This is somewhere in the same vein as that, brewed out of the same location. Um, this is better than that. Oh, it was Untitled Arts. Yes. Okay. This is, okay. I was like, yeah, this yeah, is better it. than Untitled Arts Midnight Toffee. All right. So where are you putting this then? If you remember where you put Midnight. I don't remember where I put that. <laughs> so that's actually really hard to say. Um, <laughs> right. Up. I think this is a four and a quarter beer. Okay. I think it's really decadent. It's really good. It's viscous. The there's the viscosity to this is strong. Um, it's thick, but it's not quite to that like pastry stout category. It's it's bordering on that a little bit, but it's not quite there. Um, it's definitely still a pretty standard imperial stout, but the toffee notes and the chocolate are solid on this four and a quarter. I, I'm actually going to be right there with you. I'm going to say four and a quarter. I'm going to say it's more of a pastry stout than you are, but I don't think that's because it technically is. I think it's because my palate. It's not. Where, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's it's sweeter than what I I just like would, to correct you. Okay, but you're wrong. Um, <laughs> it's sweeter than I would want my barrel-aged beers to be. Sure. With that said, though, it's really tasteful. It's really, you use a good word, it's really decadent. Um, that toffee is so mm. good. It's really, really good. It really comes out. It's the prominent is the star of the show, and they did a great job kind of highlighting that yeah. without making it so overpowering that it's, it's hard to drink. Yeah. Um, so I, I think Foreign Corn is a great score for this one. I'm kind of blown away by this. Yeah, actually. I'm, I really like it. Octopi, so. nicely yeah, done. Well done. Really, really well done beer. We'll try to find some yeah. more stuff from you and maybe do a full Octopi video we soon. I know they've got some good stuff that they've recently got. Out. Some stuff. So, more to come yeah. on that in the future. So, uh, stick around. Uh, we've got a lot more coming for you, as discussed earlier in earlier episodes. Uh, it's our third episode of the night, so, you know, we're cruising along here. Uh, find us on the rest of our social media <laughs> channels. We're on Facebook. We're on Untapped. We are on Instagram. We are on Twitter. We are here on YouTube. If Frank was here, he would tell you to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon. We would love for you to subscribe to the channel. We've got stuff coming out all week long, every single week of the year, because we have a drinking problem. So, <laughs> don't you agree? Thanks, everyone, for joining <laughs> Thank you all for joining. We've got a lot more episodes coming. Uh, happy holidays, if it's still the holidays when this episode releases. Uh, and we'll see you in a future episode. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.